monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. You know, Mike, there may not be any fans here, but this game is on. They are ready to play. Tannehill play fake, looking, throwing. Man is wide open. Man is catching. Man is scoring. That's John U. Smith. Snap it to Woodside. He rolls right. He throws. Complete. And the Titans have a first down complete to Westbrook Aquina. They snuck the backup quarterback into the game. Throw downfield going for Duvernay. Intercepted. Brown makes the catch of the 10, spinning, driving his way to the 5, oh, oh, into the end oh, zone. Wow. How did he do it? Fake runs it in, two for Tennessee. So Baltimore's going to get football, and the Titans defense has got to come up with something to stop Lamar Jackson. Jackson to throw it, under pressure. Sack! Henry gets the carry running left. Henry to the 25, Henry to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the Yes! Five. Oh, yes! Two, yes! Three. Yes! Yes! Touchdown, Titans! As the Titans will run out of Baltimore with a shocker in OT. Oh, yeah, that doesn't get old at all. No, and it probably never will. Yep. Welcome to Titans All Access. Titans coming off an overtime victory in Baltimore. And Obviously, we wanted to start the program to get you in the mood and get you excited about this 7-3 and three football team. Oh, I love it. Let's get started, Mike. Let's jump right into it. It's our Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report. John Robinson is the Titans general manager. Uh, I know you enjoyed the victory over Baltimore, but you look at it a little differently when you come back and break down the tape. John, as you viewed the tape, what pleased you most about last Sunday in Charm City? I think it's the way we, we you know, we kept fighting Mike for, for four quarters and, and into overtime. You know, we were down there, we were trading punches with those guys, but you know, our, our effort and, and our finish, what seemed like drive after drive to keep trying to find a way to, to come away with points and, and, and get a stop, uh, whether it was A.J. Brown's run where he had four or five guys helping him get in the end zone, defensively coming up with the stop, a quick three and out once we started overtime. And then Derek's, you know, run there at the end to kind of seal the win and six or seven guys sprinting right behind him uh, to finish it off. It was just really impressive, the fight that our guys showed uh, for four quarters and overtime. What enabled the Titans to get the passing game going in the second half of the game against Baltimore? And what do you do to keep that going into Indianapolis? Yeah, I mean, I think it all starts up front with the protection. You know, I thought we finally got some some clean pockets in there. We, we, we bought enough time for Ryan to, to step up or get himself in position to make some throws. I thought the receivers did a good job of, of getting open, beating uh, man coverage or, or finding those spots in zone coverage and setting a route down, coming up with grabs uh, and, and extending drives for us. And we've got to continue that against Colts. Colts also won in overtime on Sunday. They beat Green Bay. What stood out to you most about the Colts' victory over the Packers? You know, I think, you know, offensively for those guys, they racked up over 400 yards. They they rushed for right at 140, I think. You know, Rivers threw for three touchdowns. The other side of the ball, whether it was special teams or defense, they created turnovers. I think he had an interception and three fumbles that they got. So they got extra possessions for the offense. So, you know, all three phases of the game, those guys were clicking on Sunday. Do you get the feeling that Phillip Rivers is really finding his groove with his receivers right now? And if so, what do you do to throw him off? Yeah, he, he seems to be. You know, he's he's certainly more acclimated, you know, now than he was in the early part of the season when you're first kind of kicking off. Learning those receivers, the, the timing of the routes, the skill set of the players, you know, a lot of catch and run throws underneath. We've got to do a good job of, of staying tight in our coverage and trying to create some pressure and, and getting him off the spot. When Phillip can stand there on the spot and just throw the football, uh, he's a tough guy to beat. All right, John, so what do you hope to take out of Baltimore and that victory into Indianapolis that will key a win and first place in the AFC South? Well, I think it's what we led the show off with is, you know, the starting with our effort and our finish and our, and our fighting. Like, you know, they're a good football team. You know, we feel like we got a good football team. We're going to trade punches back and forth. They're going to make some plays. You know, we're going to make some plays. We just got to find ways to come up with some stops on defense, create some turnovers offensively. We got we got to push through some of those third downs and stay on the field. I mean, we got to be solid on special teams. You know, that, that hurt us in the last game. We've got to firm that up and do a good job in the kicking game. 
John, thanks so much for your time as always. Look forward to seeing you in Indianapolis on Sunday. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. John Robinson and the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report of this weekend's big game with Indianapolis. We've got a big show for you. Here's what's coming up on Titans All Access. He had the game-winning touchdown in overtime on Sunday in Baltimore. He has over 1,000 yards on the ground for the third season in a row. He could be on his way to a second straight NFL rushing title. He is the king, Derrick Henry. But for all of his toughness on the field, Derrick has a softer side off the field, and he reveals it in this week's Nissan Insider. What is the Titans' pitch for good? You'll find out about this amazing initiative. Mike and Amy have the keys to a win in Indianapolis. But up next on Titans All Access, it's time to go beneath the surface with Dave McGinnis for a deeper look at how the Titans closed out the Ravens on Sunday. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we are going to look at the Titans' critical, critical plays in overtime in a pivotal win against the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore won the toss, first and 10, minus 25 yard line, starting the fifth quarter. The Titans are deployed in a four man front. You see that the Ravens are in a pistol with two offset backs in a diamond type formation. This is going to be an option play to the Titans left. Watch how disciplined the Tennessee Titans are with this play. They've got the quarterback covered when he comes out to the right, but watch everybody gap up across the front. Everybody fits with the pulling offensive lineman, Great swarm, great tackle. This was a big, big play to be able to start off on first down. Now they're coming out here. This is 11 personnel. Watch the Tennessee Titans. Watch this unusual front that they deploy. They've got a four-man front, but one of the players that is standing up is Harold Landry. Watch where Harold Landry is, is standing up and then works into the B gap. Ricochets off the offensive guard. This is a huge sack. This sack was so big in this overtime. Now we've got third and 17. This is exactly where we want them. Now they deployed a four man front, but they are playing five under two deep coverage with everybody off defending the sticks. This is a very nice combination rush. This is a three man game out of an unusual overload look. They run a screen. Now watch everybody converge. Everybody keeps perfect leverage. You've got leverage. You've got inside out. You've got run and hit. Big play three and out on the first series of overtime. This was huge in this ball game. The next play that we're going to look at is the final, the seventh play in the offensive drive after they've punted. What we're looking at on first and 10 here, watch the Tennessee Titans. The excellent blocking. This is an outside zone run. This is bread and butter. Watch everybody get a hat on a hat on the outside and watch our offensive front be able to push this five-man front completely past the numbers. And then Derrick Henry, watch him follow his blocks. Look at everybody, hat on a hat. All of Baltimore's covered up. Now Derrick Henry makes a tremendous jump cut, sticks his left foot in the ground, and it's touchdown Titans, a huge pivotal win in overtime at Baltimore. Up next, a special visit with a special player who also happens to be a special person. Derrick Henry is the Nissan Insider. Next on Titans All Access. Lots of highlights for Derrick Henry in his time with the Titans. And in Baltimore, he went over 1,000 yards rushing for the season. He's done that three years in a row. He is one of only four players in franchise history to have three straight 1,000-yard seasons, Earl Campbell, Eddie George, Chris Johnson, and now the king, Derrick Henry. That's good company. That is great company. I am so glad that all of those people have played for us. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's rough, he's tough, he's something else. We think he's the best back in the NFL. But the part that you don't know about Derrick Henry off the field, he's a softie. How do you get away from the game in season, knowing that 
While it's a game and you love it, it is your job, and everybody has to get away from their job for a little bit. Definitely uh, spend time with my family. I'm a big, big family guy, so love spending time with my family. Might take a vacation here or there, but you know, I'm a, a homebody guy. I like to chill, watch movies. My daughter's here now, so that, that, that doesn't get no better than that. Spending time with her, and get to see and watch her grow, and you know, laugh and have fun, and you know, just have those moments. Why do you enjoy being a dad so much? It's just a uh, indescribable feeling, you know. It's like, like that's like being like Christmas, Christmas every day, you know. Seeing her smile, seeing her laugh, watching her grow, it's just, it's, it's just so cool to look at something that you know I created, and I mean, I can't even, can't even put it in words. Every day I wake up, every day I come home, I just can't. I look forward to get home to her and seeing her. Being a girl dad is the best, isn't it? The best. Derek, congratulations on the Old Spice commercial. That's why I use stripper protection Old Spice sweat defense. There it goes. It's not just strong, it's strong, strong. I think the thing that really sticks out to me is it's a great commercial. It's a lot of fun. Did you know what it was going to look like when they asked you to be a part of it? I didn't know what it was going to look like. I knew it had to be Retro and uh, voiceover, because you know a lot of going to be, you know, present, you know, with a lot of things right now because of because of COVID. But I think it's going to be a video game theme. But the way it turned out, it looked great. It was a great job. And I just have to be a part of it. So, what did you have to do specifically? How did your preparation work in, in going to making the commercial? Yeah, they just gave me the uh, script to read, and um, they gave me uh, pointers on how they wanted the sound. And uh, we just did it at a studio uh, and it recorded it. And there's gonna be tips here and there as I read the script. So I got it to, to where they liked it. And um, everything worked out well. And I'm glad that it turned out fine. And it's a great commercial. My favorite part, I think, is where you're dragging the two Los Angeles Rams through the airport. You drag them all over the place. You have the football field and then through the airport and then to the workout facility and, and all of it. You're gonna be much longer. <laughs> it's gonna be a minute, minute. Good one. Have you gotten a lot of response from your friends and family yet to having a chance to see it? Oh yeah, they definitely enjoyed it. They thought it was funny. Uh, all sent me texts. Uh, they were laughing about it. Like I said, I, I grew up uh, watching No Spice commercials, so for me to be able to have the opportunity, um, it's, it's a blessing. And uh, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Now you've done national spots before. We certainly know about the Nissan Heisman House. So I'm wondering. Had you ever driven a mower before and had you ever trimmed hedges before when you did that in the Heisman House spot that we had a chance to see this fall? I think I drove it a couple of times with my uncles. I didn't trim my grandma's yard and cut my grandma's uh my grandma's grass, but it's been a while since I well, uh since I've been on one. That was a lot of fun and definitely funny, man. Uh, they always they always created uh, creative and come up with good ideas uh, for those commercials each and every year with Nissan. When you were a young man in Yulee, Florida, did you ever think you'd be doing a TV commercial seen nationally or part of a TV commercial that looks like a video game? I definitely wanted to be a great football player. And, you know, for me, just watching football uh, throughout the years, me growing up and seeing all the, the greats, you know, they all were in commercials and, you know, had national attention going on. So I knew it came with the game, but the main focus was just being a great football player. And then I knew, I, I knew all that other stuff will come eventually if you just, you know, play good football, keep a good head on your shoulders, be a great role model for, you know, your kids and, you know, everything else to take care of yourself. All Titans fans, very proud of you and happy for your success. Derek Henry, thank you for the time and keep up the good work. All right, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. That's a side of Derek Henry you didn't expect to see. Absolutely. I don't think people get to see the softer dad side. And now we know why he smells so nice. Yes, that's exactly right. When we come back on Titans All Access, we're going to show you something really nice the Titans are doing for small businesses and entrepreneurs in our community. The pitch for good. Explained when Titans All Access continues. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Now, the Tennessee Titans have always been more than just a football team, and they've really wanted to be a fixture in this Nashville community. And one of the ways to do that is by helping out local businesses, especially in what has been a rather tough year. Mike Keith shows you the story of the Pitch for Good, an opportunity for local businesses to get involved with the Tennessee Titans. 
The Tennessee Titans are working with Pinnacle Financial Partners and the Nashville Entrepreneur Center to celebrate small businesses and also create unique opportunities for local entrepreneurs through the Pitch for Good Tennessee Tough. This contest is to award a local entrepreneur with a grand prize of being a Titan sponsor next year in 2021. The Pitch for Good Tennessee Tough is being held in seven rounds and five of those are complete. We'd like to introduce the winner of round five for music and entertainment, Tim Burkhead. He created the TM app, which provides on the road support, live event consultation and tour coordination services for live music professionals of all budgets and experience levels through a proprietary web-based live event management software. Tim, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mike, I appreciate it. Also joining us from the Nashville Entrepreneur Center is Bren Plummer, Vice President Inclusion and Community Relations at the Nashville Entrepreneur Center. She hosts the virtual events and is a key contributor to this series. Bren, welcome. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. All right, let's talk about the idea behind creating the Pitch for Good series. Bren, take it away and explain it to us. At the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, we're on a mission to make Nashville the best place in America to start, grow, or scale a business. And part of that is shining a light on the entrepreneurs who are making our community better, stronger, more innovative. The idea was let's really elevate these entrepreneurs making the best of what is a really, really dark time. And we're really thrilled to be partnering with the Tennessee Titans on this because it's a part of Nashville, it's a part of Tennessee. Explain the different competitions that have taken place and the two that are still to happen. We have had, gosh, Pandemic Edition, Black Founders Edition, Women Founders Edition, Music and Technology Edition and Entertainment, Data and Analytics and Artificial Intelligence. And now we have two remaining. We have both the uh, one that's coming up next week, which is on healthcare technology. The one that's coming after that is what we're calling Tennessee Tough. So we're highlighting ventures across the state of Tennessee that are making the most again out of this moment and also innovating in ways that might be novel or surprising. What's coming up over the next two months as the pitch for good Tennessee Tough continues from Pinnacle Financial, the Tennessee Titans, and the Nashville Entrepreneur Center? We're anticipating a lot of things that are very current and thinking about this moment, but also similar to Tim's app, something that's forward casting, future casting. Entrepreneurs are so good at casting a vision for how the world should be. So I'm anticipating a lot more ideas that are looking forward into the future post COVID. What do we want to be true for Tennesseans as we look beyond this COVID-19 moment that we're in and really making the best of, of this life and of this beautiful place that we get to call home. Special collaboration between the Tennessee Titans, the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, and Pinnacle Financial Partners. The Pitch for Good Tennessee Tough continues. Tim, Bren, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Coming up, there's so much more on Titans All Access, including a check-in with Taylor Lewan, and of course, the best part of the show, Mike Keith's keys. Stick around. On the next Titans All Access, are you ready for some December football? The Tennessee Titans are, and they're ready for a game at Nissan Stadium. The Titans host the Cleveland Browns at home, and we'll have a full preview of the rematch of the 2019 season opener. And he's one of the leaders on this Titans team, even if he doesn't say it a lot. Of course, when you're 6'8", 325, you don't really have to. You'll meet Dennis Kelly and the Nissan Insider. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. We hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Hope you did. I did. What about you? Well, I couldn't get together with everybody like usual, but still had a good meal for sure and, and lots to be thankful for, for certain. Certainly thankful for Taylor Lewan, our star left tackle. Miss him right now on the injury list. But what he's doing through the program, feeding Nashville, is something we're certainly thankful for. We take you to Nissan Stadium the day before Thanksgiving on Wednesday, and Taylor Lewan and his wife, Taylor, and also Florida Georgia Lions' Tyler Hubbard and his wife, Haley, distributing pre-ordered meals to up to 700 people in need. Feeding Nashville's idea is to feed the hungry and feed those families while also supporting local restaurants and their employees in this very difficult time. To be able to give back in any way is, is a special and really good feeling to have. 
a lot of good coming from Taylor Lewan, his wife and others and feeding Nashville. Congratulations to them. Helping so many people in this city and during the holidays, it just feels a little extra special. That's a great thing to see. Good stuff. Titans getting ready to go to Indianapolis this weekend. You ready for some keys? I'm ready for the keys. Mike, let's go. All right, so key number one for the Tennessee Titans is take care of business on special teams like you did in Baltimore. Make your field goals, punt the ball, cover the kicks, don't have any big problems. Just do your job and take care of business. That's key number one. All right, that seems easy enough. What's key number two? Make plays for your quarterback. You did that in the second half at Baltimore. Do you realize that Ryan Tannehill began 8 of 15 passing for just 44 yards? But then when things got started in the third quarter, 14 of 16 for 215 yards and a touchdown. What changed? Well, guys made plays for it. Help your quarterback. All right, the last key. Tackle. That's what it comes down to. In the game on November 12th, the Titans did not tackle very well in space. The Titans did well in Baltimore, particularly in the second half. That's what they've got to do against the Colts on Sunday. I like it when you have a key for every phase of the game. I think that's nice. Well, we try to be complete on this show. Mm -hmm, and we sure are. Well, thank you so much, Amy Wells. We'll remind you, the Titans and the Colts kick off at 12.02 Central Time at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. We're on the air on Titans Radio with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central. We hope that you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thankful for all of you joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.